I was on my way back to the sorority house after a party when I saw it, and it left my blood boiling. The entire place was covered in toilet paper, and the inside was turned upside down. It was like a tornado flew in and destroyed everything in its path. On the living room wall were the spray-painted words, Happy Halloween Princess. I knew exactly who my culprit was. Stupid frat boys, you are all dead meat. Hey, I'm Rue from New York, and my life was pretty great until I decided to take my revenge on the frat boys on campus. Like and subscribe so I can tell you how a simple plan turned into something I could never have imagined. And trust me, it's not what you think. My dad was very successful, so some people called me spoiled, but it's not wrong to have everything you want if you deserve it, right? The frat boys hate us. Well, me most of all. I mean, is it really my fault that I'm one of the richest and most popular girls in school? Every time I walk by, they have to say something. Hey, princess, didn't bring your carriage to university. You weren't there to pull it, so I got my brand new, one-of-a-kind Rolls Royce. See? Makes your car look like a wagon. We always got on each other's nerves. When I saw what they did to our sorority house, I knew I would get revenge. One night, I sneaked into the frat house when none of them were there, blocked the drains in the sinks and the showers, and opened up all the taps in the house. Try going to swim practice in your own house, boys. <laughs> I left the water gushing and ran out. That's when I bumped into someone, a security guard. What are you doing here after dark? Oh, I just had to drop something off. But I was cut off when the windows broke open and all the water rushed out like a dam. Oy vey. I was immediately taken to the dean's office and suspended for a week. Fine with me. I'll take the vacation. But then, as a punishment for destroying university property, I had to <gasps> go and serve food at the community center. I tried to get my dad to help and get me out of it, but he was too busy. So. Oh, I had to go. I had never been to that side of town, and I was terrified. It was dark and dingy, and everyone stared at me. I quickly ran to the building, and after introducing myself, I was led to the kitchen at the back to wash dishes. Um, I'm sorry, but I've never washed dishes in my life. I don't know how. I have faith in you. Here, don't want to stain your pretty dress. My birthday is next Friday. I won't be stuck here doing dishes and get all smelly, am I? Isn't there something else I can do? Like counting money? I'm really good at that. There's no money to count here. No money? money? Then why does this place even exist? Never mind. Look, you want to leave as soon as possible, right? The best way to do that is to start washing dishes. Go ahead. I'll watch and make sure you're doing it right. It wasn't like I had a choice, so... I picked up a spoon and wait. I got drenched. OMG, you said this was supposed to be easy. It usually is. You know, it's not nice to laugh at someone's misery. True, but you gotta admit, it was pretty funny. Why are you here? Just to help out. No, I mean, what did you do to get sent here? I played this totally awesome prank on the frat boys, but got busted. What did you do? Oh, I didn't do anything. I just have free time when I'm not working, so I come here to give an extra hand. Wait, you do this on purpose? On your day off? For free? Just turn the spoon down. That way it doesn't soak you. And you should wear sweats, not dresses. Put your headphones in. Enjoy. You'll get it. See you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Wait, what's your name? Andrew. And then he left. I did my best at washing dishes while listening to music, and actually, it wasn't so bad. And I did a pretty Pretty good job. I was kind of proud of myself. The next few days went by in a blur. Whenever I got bored, I took pictures and videos for my gram. Hashtag I work hard. Hashtag never quit. One day, I was knocked over by a clumsy older woman. Suddenly, I was covered in gross food gunk. Ugh, what have you done? These are Jimmy Choo's. It's one of a kind. Do you even know how much they cost? I'm sorry, dear. My eyesight is not very good. Don't worry, Mrs. Peters. It was an accident. She's fine. Let me help you to your seat. I suddenly felt all eyes on me. Even Andrew looked disappointed. My cheeks got red. My face super hot. I never felt like this before. I quickly ran out and hid in a back corner of the kitchen. That's when a small hand tapped my hand. It's just a little curry. You can wash it off and your shoes will look brand new. These are expensive. The color, you won't understand. Are you one of the people we serve? Where are your parents? No, I'm Joey. Mommy's busy at work and Drew's my neighbor. He brings me here to make sure I'm not alone, so my mom doesn't need to pay for a babysitter. He asked me to check on you make sure you're okay. He did? I can't believe I just yelled at that old lady. Why does he even care how I feel? Oh, I, I don't think I belong here. He told me you're a rich girl. You're only here because you got in trouble. I couldn't be mad. It was true, but deep down, for some reason, it hurt. That's what he thought of me? I guess I guess the question was, why did I even care what Andrew thought of me? At the end of the day, I decided to talk to him. Andrew, I'm really sorry. Look, Rue, it's one thing to not want to do dishes, but these people need help. You come to work parading your diamond earrings in front of people who can't even afford to eat. I asked you not to dress like that. I did stop dressing up, and not that you need to know, but these are my 
mother's. She lives far away, and this is the only way I can have her with me all the time. I was so upset, I rushed out before he could respond. I couldn't understand why I was getting so worked up. I barely knew him. I don't think I had a crush. I don't know what it was. That night, instead of scrolling on my phone or shopping, I went to the storeroom and looked at the old pictures of my mom that my dad had put away. I found some old videos my mom had made of us. I loved watching how mom and dad both cared for me. I didn't know when, but I fell asleep on the floor. I woke up to the sound of the wind. There was a huge storm outside overnight. My phone was lit up with hurricane warnings. The next day, it took over an hour to get to the community center because of all the trees on the street. The minute I got there, my jaw dropped. There were more than a hundred people there, wrapped in blankets, and some of them were even crying. It was chaos. Where the heck have you been? We need all the help we can get. What's going on? Why are there so many people? The hurricane destroyed or damaged some houses. All these people have nowhere else to go right now. They really need our help today. Okay. What do you need? I'll show you. And I'm sorry about what I said about your earrings. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry too. Okay, let's get to work. Again, I wasn't sure why it felt so good that he apologized and things were okay between us, but there was no time to think about it. I focused on trying to help the people around me. Most of them were older people and children. I ran around with the other volunteers and served hot food and drinks, gave blankets, and dry clothes for them to change into. I was giving a cup of soup to an old lady when Joey tugged on my shirt. Joey, did something happen to your house too? Yeah, the storm heard it. More and more people kept coming. The food truck can't get here because of the storm. We're gonna run out of food and space. I looked around at the crowd and felt my heart breaking. I knew I had to do something to help. So I decided to take all of them home. I had more than enough space and so much food. It would only be for a couple of days. Dad will be proud of me for helping. At home, with the help of all the volunteers, I was finally able to make everyone feel safe and warm. But that didn't last long because when Dad came storming in, he looked pissed. What is going on here? I immediately took him into his office to explain. After I told him everything, I thought he would be happy. What is wrong with you? I want them out of my house. Now, I don't care where they go, but they can't stay here. Are you for real? These people need help. If mom was here, she'd help. This isn't a shelter. Get them out. Fine, have it your way. I'll take them to a hotel. Well, I'm not paying a single penny. You don't have to. I've been saving my money so I could go on a trip to Paris with a sorority when we graduate. You're going to give away all your money to these people you don't even know? I'll save my monthly allowance. That's money for you, not strangers. There will be no more allowances if this is how you're going to spend it. What about graduation? You said you'd help me. You know how much going there means to me. Not if you give all your money away. I couldn't believe how cold-hearted he had become. All I wanted to do was get out of there. So I arranged for all the people to travel to a hotel close by, hiring two buses. I sat in the back where Andrew joined me. I overheard the argument with your dad. I was trying to find the bathroom and got lost. Your house is really confusing. I'm sorry things got so bad between you two. I can't believe he changed so much. I guess that's what you must think of all rich people. Joey told me that's what you call me. I shouldn't have judged you. You're going out of your way to help these people you don't even know with your own money. Sorry about your Paris trip. That sounded like it would have been fun. The other girls wanted to go for fun, but for me, never mind. It's okay. This is more important. We finally arrived at the hotel, and I went straight to the manager and spoke to him. He was more than willing to help, but he informed me that he had limited rooms left and that the money I had wouldn't be enough to cover an entire week of their stay in food. He needed to pay his staff. My mind went blank. What should I do now? I tried not to freak out in front of everyone who was looking at me for answers. And then I saw the mirror and I saw my diamond earrings, my mom's earrings. Here, will this do? Please? My puppy dog eyes worked because he agreed. All of these people finally had a place to stay, warm and safe, for a while, till we figured something out. Joey's mom hugged me so tight. I started crying because I hadn't been hugged like that in a long time. All of it got too overwhelming, and I excused myself and stepped out. You okay? Not used to so many compliments? No, it's just I thought of my mom. I'm sorry. When did she- What? Oh, no. She had to leave last year after her and my dad got divorced. She went back to Paris, where her family lives. I want to go see her. Dad won't help me with it, and she can't afford it, so I was saving. I know it looks like I have money, but it's all my dad's. This was really selfless of you. Thanks. He went back in to help everyone get settled, and then I realized 
why he was different from any other boy I had liked before. I actually cared what he thought of me. The other boys were all the same. They all only cared about how they looked and never did anything for anyone else. Andrew was not like anyone I knew before. The next few days went by super fast as the volunteers and I were busy helping the hotel maids and cooks since we brought so many people. One day, Andrew came up to me and handed me an envelope. When I told everyone about what you gave up to help them, they set up an online fund for your Paris trip. Happy birthday, Rue. Wait, what? In all the chaos, I hadn't even realized it was my birthday. I can't believe he remembered. I wanted nothing more in the world than to go to Paris and see my mom, but I couldn't accept the money when all the people here still needed so much help. So I gave it all to the shelter to fix all the damaged homes. On our last day at the hotel, as we were all getting ready to leave in the lobby, Joey ran up to me with a newspaper in hand. Look, look, Lou, it's you! And he was right. Right there in the newspaper was a picture of me and the story about how I helped so many people and what I gave up to do it. I was shocked. I always wanted to be famous, but I never thought it would be from something like this. Thank you so much, sweetheart. You're like an angel who came and saved us. So we all wanted to do something for you too. Oh, no, please. The donation was for you. She's not talking about those donations. She's talking about these donations. Andrew opened the lobby door and outside were hundreds of people from town who heard about what happened and what I did. They were all leaving donations for my trip. You helped people, so people helped you back. All of a sudden, people began to applaud for me. And so, that's how a shallow, spoiled girl became a criminal, and then something more. And I even got a little extra to bring a friend along. Come on, Andrew.